this morning's newspaper. Holmes, have you read this article about you? No, Watson, not yet, and I won't have time to. Read it before you leave. It's outrageous. If you insist. Prince Woodville, French culinary expert and bagpipe player, might be our next king. That's not so shocking, my dear fellow. You know exactly to which article I'm referring, Holmes. How can Farley dare to tarnish your reputation like that? You know, Watson, that wherever glory walks, jealousy is bound to follow. As for the forgery of the necklace, I suspect that we shall soon be enlightened in this regard. Come in, Inspector Baines. The door's open. Ah, Mr. Holmes. How did you know I was here? You are one of our rare visitors who avoids the second-to-last step of the stairs, which creaks dreadfully. And if I add the clinking of the handcuffs at your belt, to what do we owe the pleasure of your visit, Inspector? Have you read that, Rag? Inspector, I assume that you have the fake necklace with you. It's why you're here. Your superiors would like me to examine it. Indeed. They would like you to confirm or deny putting this fake in the box. Can't that wait? I must go to the house of Lord Peregrine Maitland, the Bishop of Knightsbridge. Inspector, can you explain this slander? Has the necklace of the Samoas really been replaced by a fake? I don't know how the reporter got hold of the information, but it's true. About the necklace, of course. I wouldn't permit myself to question the integrity and honesty of Mr. Holmes. The necklace is a forgery? Impossible! I saw the Marquis authenticated before my very eyes, before Holmes returned it to its place. Mr. Holmes, the Marquis believes Osmond Farley's theory. I shouldn't be surprised if the reporter isn't behind all this slander about you. He's a freelancer, well known for his explosive and subjective articles. In any case, the Marquis assures us that you were the last person to have the necklace in your hands. Let's return to the Marquis's house, Holmes. I'm sure that we'll have no trouble in taking apart this theory. It is unnecessary. Such allegations collapse on their own, like one of Mrs. Hudson's souffles. Let us leave the police to solve this problem and turn our attention to the matters in hand. Perhaps you are right, Holmes. And the Marchioness? She is beside herself. Without the necklace, her marriage is compromised. It is the principal item of the young woman's dowry. What a lovely marriage. Holmes, forgive me for insisting, but don't you want to examine the fake jewellery? Watson, I have an appointment, and it's out of the question that I arrive late. It will only take you a couple of minutes. You really must quell the suspicions put forward in this appalling article. If you will allow me, Inspector? Be my guest. Very well. These three pearls are of poor quality. This pearl is too small. It is not in its place here. This pearl is a different color. Too many defects. This necklace is a fake. 
This is nothing but a vulgar copy, and at a glance it would appear that the forger has intended for it to be seen as such. How could we have been fooled by such a blatant imitation? I don't understand. Yes, how is it possible? Holmes, do you have a theory about this? I have absolutely no idea. You insisted that I examine the necklace, and I have done so. Now it is important that I keep my appointment. I'm sure, Inspector, that you will throw some light on this affair. Holmes. You may accompany me, Watson, if you care to do so. Goodbye, gentlemen. I'll keep you informed as to my inquiries. Goodbye, Inspector. You mentioned a bishop, didn't you? Are we going to his home? Yes, the Bishop of Knightsbridge. I put his address on our map of London on my desk. Would you get it for me, please? All right, Holmes. I have found your map. 